Welcome back to Politics in Progress, coming to you from the Ashworth by the Sea in beautiful Hampton Beach. All right, uh, the, this past Tuesday, it was Election Day, primary day in the city of Manchester. Three front runners, two were, will face off on, uh, on Election Day in November. Ted Gatsas tops the ticket for mayor of Manchester, followed by Alderman Mark Roy. And Bobby Steven finishes third. This was an interesting race, Kathy. Let me start with you because you had old Manchester and Bobby. You yeah. had sort of the young Democrat and Mark Roy. Mm -hmm. And then you had good old Teddy, state <laughs> senator, alderman, and a dear friend of yours. Uh, <laughs> interesting mix of candidates. Are you surprised the way it came out? Um, you know, I was a little surprised at the fact that Mark not only came in second, but he came, you know, he had as decisive a victory as he did. There was a lot of talk that Bobby was coming on, but I think the reality was is that as the race coalesced, Mark got out there more, um, that Mark was speaking more to a constituency than, than Bobby was. And so it's going to be interesting. You know, Manchester, as everybody knows from outside the city, I mean, people from outside the city say, I don't even understand Manchester. Yeah. I don't understand what goes on there. For those of us in Manchester, it's always fascinating. We have had elections recently where the fellow who came in first um, then loses in November. That happened to um, Bob Baines. Yep. It happened to Ray Wazurik. So the fact that Ted Gatsis came in first this time doesn't mean that he's going to win. Um, so people who are saying that he's a front runner should probably take a look at history because you never know what happens. With there will, In order to win this race in Manchester, you've got to get about... 10,001 votes because mm -hmm. you expect about 20,000 people to show up right. to vote in the general election. Each one of them has to go out and find a lot more voters. And so then the question is, did Teddy max out in the primary? He spent a ton of money to get the vote he got, $45 a vote. Did, and so he did a large get out the vote effort. So is, did he max out? That's a, that's a question. So we'll see. I don't know what's going to happen. Um, it'll be interesting in seven weeks. Yeah. And um, hold on to your hats, everybody. It's going to be exciting. And he traditionally so many of those people mm -hmm. who will vote in November don't vote in the primary. Sure. Yeah. How much an effect can that have on an election like this? Um, well, the, the big thing is that if, if Te Teddy can demonstrate that he's the winner, he almost gets 50 percent. What did he get? 50, 47? 47, 47, 47, 47, 48, but he didn't, yeah. he didn't break he didn't 50, get 50 for, the, for the money he spent. That's but not good. It, it, it depends on how he plays it. And actually, mm -hmm. if he can play that as he's the front runner and he's the guy that's going to win, and, uh, and, and actually he has a little bit of advantage because I think that some of uh, uh, Bobby Stevens' supporters are probably closer to him culturally or age-wise than to Mark Roy. I think he has some opportunities there. Uh, Manchester still, you know, it, I'd say it was, it's, it's a place where Democrats ought to win this race. Um, it, but it's a matter of Gatsas being, I think, better known. Uh, I think he's certainly shown that he's got more money and he's willing to spend it. So it, it's going to be interesting. But. Uh, um, I'd say if you had to handicap it now, I'd say that uh, the Gatsis is probably, you probably have to say that he's the guy that, that, that you would be less surprised if he won than you would be if Roy won. Grant, you're a first time voter in uh, Manchester? No, I've been here before. Oh, but okay. yeah, I, did, I do recommend moving into a you city. You only vote two once in each election, all right? Once a time. But I do recommend moving to a city two weeks before the election because <laughs> you don't get any mail, you don't get any phone calls. <laughs> you show up and vote. Um, Did you have an opportunity in the short time you were there to, to study the candidates and see what each of them represented? Yeah, and, and Mark Roy certainly did tap into a core constituency, labor unions, and they're the ones that turned out his vote across Manchester. Ted Gatsis has a base in his state senate district, certainly as a past senate president, he, he's fairly well known. And he won across districts. Right, and he won every single ward. And, Bob, Marks. and Bobby Stephen didn't run just because he had a really good chicken parm 20 years ago. He got a bunch of votes from people who supported the tax cap. Bobby Stevens ran as the toughest candidate on taxes. Uh, and now, um, between Ted Gatsis and Mark Roy, Mark Roy wants to spend more money. He voted against the tax cap. Um, he and the rest of the aldermen broke the law to try to prevent Manchester voters from voting on the tax cap. So as long as that is the issue base in November, Ted Gatsis is in very good shape. But when you know, when you, Bob you, Baines you and Frank Ginta... When Bob Baines and Frank Ginta turned that. around the election and beat the front runner in the primary, it's because they redefined the issue set. Bob Baines made it about Ray Wazork raising local property taxes. Frank Ginta made it about Bob Baines raising property taxes and education and public safety. Can Mark Roy change the nature of this debate and get it away from taxes? Well, actually, because if it's about taxes, he's going to lose. No, actually, you know, and that I think you're wrong there because what you have in Teddy Gatz is the fellow who has been writing the budgets for the city of Manchester for several years now. 
And Bobby Stevens called it. He said, we've had tax increase after tax increase after tax increase in Manchester with Ted Gatzis writing those budgets. But despite all those increases, we've had layoffs. Ted Gatz has promised there would be no teacher layoffs with this last budget. There were teacher layoffs. We've had cuts in services. We have, we have schools in Manchester where academic honor societies have been cut back, literary magazines have been cut back. You don't even have theater clubs now because of the budget cuts as a result of Gatz's budgets. If, how, can you how can you say he's better on taxes when he's written budgets, increased taxes, but has cut services to the city. We're getting much less and paying more for it. So I think what Mark Roy can do is turn that discussion around and say, if you like your taxes in Manchester today, if you like seeing where we are today with all the cuts, with tax increases given to you by Ted Gatzis, vote for Gatzis. If you want to change, if you want to be smarter, if you want to be more efficient, if you want to do things in a new way, mm -hmm. instead of old Manchester, let's do things in a new way, let's be forward thinking, let's be creative, then Mark Roy is a candidate for you. I think from the political perspective, it's hard to run on a vote for me, I'm going to get the yeah. drama club back. <laughs> no, but you know, my point though, Andy, is, and, and no, my, but my point is, is that Gatzis has raised taxes and yet laid off teachers. There's and, and, something wrong with this. He is, and, and he has not been competent in what he does, and he gets his numbers wrong. Consistently, uh, budget after budget, he says, we're going to do this, and then X will happen. And he's wrong. The, he the promised key, the that key, there key, would though, be no the, the, and, and I think Grant points this out, is it's the, the perception. Mm -hmm. And if he's perceived as being the guy who's going to be against taxes, and he's able to successfully paint Mark Roy as being the person who's in favor of taxes, that's, that's the issue. And I think that that's going to be, you know, uh, Teddy's not in an ideal position on that, but <laughs> Mark's not in an ideal position. And if, if we were running against Bobby Stevens, yes, Ted Gatzis would be vulnerable because he's been on the board a lot. He's had a lot of controversial votes. But the reason the budgets have been so high is because they've needed to get votes from aldermen like Mark Roy, who never have enough of the city's now, Mark, money to Mark spend. Mark voted against this budget that Teddy wrote. Because it didn't spend enough. Money, he, he vote, no, because it was not efficient enough and it took... It, and it, diverted, didn't spend enough money. it diverted money away from the school district that the state sent to Manchester for schools. Teddy's budget took that money away from the schools. John Lynch said to divert and that money against no, schools to lower local and property no, taxes. And so I think Teddy's got, I remember, Teddy just, I think, three years ago lost his own ward when he ran for state senate and has not done as well in Manchester in a state senate races. So we'll see what happens. Look, the, ra the race isn't over. Half the people that are going <laughs> to vote in November. The show is over. <laughs> <laughs> All right, unfortunately, we have to leave it at that. Uh, if you want to hear more political discussion, by the way, every Wednesday morning from 8 until 9 o'clock, just tune into WGIR or WGIRAM.com if you don't happen to be in the listening area. And, of course, for more politics and progress, join us next Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. Have a great Sunday afternoon, and we'll see you next Sunday right here at the Ashworth in Hampton. Activities on a glorious day. Huh? Let's get out there and play! <laughs>